We have a book in our library. We also sell this book and it's called One of the Body's Many Cries for Water. And the whole book is on water. It would probably be one of the most interesting books that I have ever read. We will gain insights from Barbara O'Neill, a dedicated naturopath and health educator who is committed to guiding you towards achieving optimal health through natural methods. Today, we're going to explore a topic that's often overlooked but incredibly important, water and the effects of dehydration on your body. Water is life. It's not just something we drink when we're thirsty. It's essential for nearly every function in our bodies. From aiding digestion and circulation to regulating body temperature and removing waste, water is crucial to keeping us alive and well. Dehydration occurs when your body loses more fluids than it takes in, and it can have serious consequences. Even mild dehydration can lead to symptoms like headaches, fatigue, and difficulty concentrating. More severe dehydration can affect your stomach, pancreas, colon, lungs, and brain, leading to serious health issues. Your body gives you signs when you're dehydrated, such as dry mouth, dark urine, and dizziness. It's important to listen to these signals and take action by hydrating properly. But hydration isn't just about drinking water, it's about retaining it too. This is where electrolytes like sodium and potassium come into play. To stay properly hydrated, make water a regular part of your daily routine. Incorporate water-rich foods like fruits and vegetables into your diet. You can also add a pinch of sea salt to your water to help your body absorb and retain fluids more effectively. Remember, water is your body's most vital resource and dehydration is a condition that can easily be prevented with a few simple habits. Make sure you're drinking enough water throughout the day and paying attention to your body's signals. Let's listen to Barbara tell us more about our need for water as it is described by Dr. Batman Hellage. Dr. Batman Gehelde, we'll call him, we'll call him Dr. B because it's a difficult name. He goes into every single organ, every single part of the body and how it is affected by full hydration and how it is affected by dehydration. There are two other titles to his book. One, well, the first title is the body's, One of the Body's Many Cries for Water. The other title is He's Not Sick, He's Thirsty. Another title is Don't Treat Thirst with Medications. He was a political prisoner in India. I think it was uh, early 80s, late 70s, early 80s. And in the hospital, there were a lot of sick people and he only had one thing that he could use and that was water. So no matter what the problem was, he'd give them a glass of water. 15 minutes later, he'd give them another glass of water. 15 minutes later, he'd give them another glass of water. He only did it because that's all he had. But he noticed as the days and the weeks went by, people were recovering. People with constipation were no longer constipated. People with stomach ulcers were no longer suffering from stomach ulcers. Now Barbara will tell us about Dr. Batman Hellage and some of his observations on dehydration. You see, the lining of the stomach has a thick mucosa wall on it and mucus is 99% water. And he shows in dehydration, it's one of the first places that we lose water is the stomach. Inside that mucosa lining, there's sodium bicarbonate designed to neutralize stomach acid if it tries to come through. Well, in this tiny little layer here, there's no sodium bicarbonate. So very easy for the hydrochloric acid to start eating little holes in the lining of the stomach. He claims that the writing of his book to have healed 3,000 cases of stomach ulcer with water alone. He shows that a glass of water half an hour before a meal thickens that mucosa wall. Our hydrochloric acid is made from water. Barbara will inform us about how much water we need to drink. Today is Wednesday. Yesterday, Tuesday, I needed to drink two glasses of water so my liver could make enough hydrochloric acid for breakfast this morning. Yesterday, I needed to drink two glasses of water, another two, so my liver could make enough hydrochloric acid for lunch today. 
And if a person eats three meals, that's six glasses of water the day before just to make the digestive juices. Wow, that's only, that's only digestion. That's not even mentioning all the other body parts. Barbara will inform us about how much water we lose. You see, our water loss in a day, I looked at this a little earlier, so I'll recap it. Out of the kidneys, our water loss in a day is approximately 1.5 litres. Via our skin, it is approximately 0.5 of a litre. Out of our colon, it is approximately 0.3 of a litre. If someone has diarrhoea and are diarrheaing a lot, it, it could come up to 0.5, even one litre. And out of our lungs, for every exhalation, there is moisture, 0.2 of a litre. So that's a two and a half litre loss every day. And have you noticed we've got no reserve tank on the back? The only water that goes in is the water we put in. And that's what Dr. B's book is all on. Barbara will now tell us what part of the body is first affected by dehydration. He says one of the first places it's felt is the stomach. Another, of course, is digestion. When we don't have enough water to make the digestive juices, which are the enzymes that break our food down, now, we will learn about the second body, part that is affected by dehydration. He also showed that in the pancreas, it is affected by dehydration. Let me show you. In the pancreas, it releases three Actually, it releases four digestive enzymes in the gut. So we'll put G gastrointestinal tract. In the pancreas, pancreatic lipase is released and it does the final breakdown of fat. Pancreatic amylase does the final breakdown on starch. And trypsin, I'll just do a trip here. It does the breakdown of protein. And chymotrypsin, it also does the breakdown of protein. So this is one, two, three, four enzymes released from the pancreas that finalize digestion. Most people don't realize that the pancreas is probably the main organ of digestion. When people die of um, pancreatic pa cancer, they usually die of malnutrition because they haven't got the fi final breakdown of their food, so their food can't get out of their gastrointestinal tract and into their blood, so they basically die of malnutrition. The pancreas also releases two hormones from the blood. And this is glycogen and insulin. Now those hormones are released into the blood and they're the ones that control our blood glucose levels. If they go too high, insulin gets it down. If they go too low, glycogen gets it up. These hormones are constantly balancing the glucose levels in our blood. Very important organ is the pancreas. All of these hormones and these ones here are made from water. So a person can develop diabetes, digestive problems, all because they're dehydrated. Dehydration also is felt by the following organ. Let's move on down to the colon. One of the main functions of the colon is to take water out so stools are formed. If the body is dehydrated, more water gets taken out than should be taken out. Then we get rabbit pellets, uh, cement, basically there's constipation. Very difficult to have three evacuations a day, which Dr. Kellogg said is a necessity if you're having three intakes a day in a dehydrated person. Another very important organ that is affected by dehydration is the following. Dr. B also showed that dehydration is felt in the brain. Our brain is a hydroelectric system. No hydro, no electricity. 
A person can suffer from depression, negative thought patterns because they're dehydrated. Something else happens in dehydration with the brain and that is the brain cells shrink. And when the brain cells shrink, that hurts. It hurts very much. When I say to people, do you get headaches? A common answer is, oh, only if I'm dehydrated. Barbara will now describe how dehydration affects the lungs. Dehydration is also felt in the lungs. Here are the little bronchioles. At the end of each bronchial, there are alveoli, and they look like a little bunch of grapes. And that alveoli is where that gaseous exchange takes place. So when we breathe in, they fill up with oxygen. And over those little alveoli are a little capillary network. And what the blood does is it picks up the oxygen and drops the carbon dioxide, then we breathe it out. It's a fascinating system. And Gray's Anatomy says we have 300 million of these. But in each little alveoli, there's a droplet of water. And because of the surface tension of water, do you understand the surface tension of water? When I trained as a hairdresser, I had to learn about surface tension of water. When you put water on your scalp, um, it doesn't really get through because of the oil. You put shampoo on, it breaks the surface tension of water and of course it can get through. Because of the surface tension of water and this little minuscule droplet of water in the alveoli, when you breathe out, the majority of your carbon dioxide is breathed out. And so you can get a full quota of oxygen back in. In dehydration, we don't have that little bit of water. So when the person breathes out, they can't breathe out all their carbon dioxide. So that when they breathe in, they're not getting as much oxygen as they could be getting. So here's another point with the most vital element needed for life. We need to be well hydrated to be able to get that oxygen and we need to be having the proper salt and all of its minerals for the cell to utilize that water. So you can see that they all interact with each other. We need all of them. Remember, your health is the lock and we're here to provide the keys. Keep turning to Key Health for insights that unlock your full potential. The key to lifelong vitality is in your hands. It's just one bite away.